remove this mesh that we've created so far. In the polygroups panel here, we have a layer called polygroup one. And I want to remove all the mesh information in this layer. So what I can do here is come down to this icon, which deletes the contents of the layer and not the layer itself. If I wanted to delete the layer, then I would use this trash can icon. So what I want to do is to show you next the mirror tool. And I'm going to stick with the points to polys because that's the tool that we've been using so far. And I'm going to just zoom in on this area. So to initiate the mirror tool, I'm going to use this mesh menu here and I'm going to come down to virtual mirror mode and I'm going to tick that tick box. Now nothing's happened so far. We are still waiting to produce some mesh information, which we know how to do now. So I'm going to put down some points and create a polygon. Now again, you're probably wondering why I haven't got any mirrored information. And that's because even though I've specified I want virtual mirror mode on, I haven't actually selected an axis in which the mirror is to take place. To do that, I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. And here you have the symmetry tab. You have an enable symmetry and show the symmetry plane. What I'm going to do now is to click on this checkbox for the X axis. And you will notice that straight away, because my virtual mirror mode is on, that it's previewed now a virtual mirror in the X axis. Now, I don't want it to be in the X axis. I want it to be on the right side of the original geometry. So let's hit S again and uncheck X and this time check Z. And now you can see that I'm mirroring in the Z axis. So this geometry on the right side is, is virtual geometry, which is why we use the virtual mirror mode. It's a representation or reflection of this geometry that has actually been created using our points to poly tool. So now I can go ahead and just start to create more geometry in the same way we did before. And whatever I create on the left side is going to be mirrored to the right side, but only as a preview. It's not real geometry at this time. This icon flips the mirrored side over. So because we've got nothing actually on this side, if I was to use this option here, because I've got nothing, then it will mirror nothing on that side. But when I flip it back to where there is geometry, then it will appear as I expect it to. We'll look at this a little bit later. So what if I wanted to join these pieces together? Well, I've got two options. I could change the tool here and go to the quads tool with the parallel extrusion method. And I could start to go to the center point and start to place polys. So how would I create bridge that gap between my virtual and actual geometry? Well, here I could use the move tool. And with vertex selected, I can zoom in just to get a little bit closer, reduce my brush size. The brush size is this large circle that you can see here. And I'm going to use the mouse wheel to reduce that size. I can also use this radius value here. So what I'll do now with the move tool active is I will move this over to the center. Now watch what 3D code does. If I decide to move this beyond this point, then because I've got virtual 
mirror mode on, the geometry gets clipped on this axis. It doesn't matter how far I pull this geometry across, then it will remain on that axis. And to show you what the, I mean by that, I'll go back to the mesh and turn off virtual mirror mode. And you can see where, how far I extended that point to, right over here. But when mirror, virtual mirror is on, then that gets clipped. So in order to commit this, in other words, remove the virtual aspect and make it real geometry, I go back to my mesh menu and I say, apply symmetry to the current layer. My current layer is polygroup one. Now at first sight, when I've clicked on that, you may think nothing's happened, but by default, the virtual mirror mode remains on. You have to manually uncheck that. And when you do so, you will see the new geometry that was created underneath. Now I can go back to one of my previous tools. Let's choose split rings here. And now I can create more geometry wherever I like. And because my symmetry is still active, you can see here the, ch the axis I chose was the Z axis. It still have, has a tick on there. Anything that I produce on one side will be carried over to the other because this enters the second part of how to do mirroring. I'll go back to my points and polys tool as that's the tool we're most familiar with so far. And now I will place down some points. Notice how the points are being mirrored still on the opposite side. And if I right mouse button over the top, I'm going to get a mirrored copy on the other side. Let's continue and create a little bit more geometry. Now notice that my virtual mirror is no longer active, but my symmetry is active, which means that I am mirroring across with live geometry. In other words, real geometry. So there's two different types of mirroring that we can do, both virtual and real mirroring. Both of them require the symmetry tab to have an axis selected. The difference is that one will preview the mirror and the other one will create live geometry on there for you. So it's important to understand the differences and which one you would prefer to use. So with this new geometry selected, I can go into it with the move tool. Maybe I can use the auto select so I can select edges, vertex and faces, and I can start to move these around now on both sides of that axis. Let's now look at some other tools. We've already spoken about the add and split tool as an option that was available to us under the points to polys tool. The add and split has its own designated space in the add geometry section. With the add to split tool selected, you have to hover over either an edge or a vertice to start this process off. You can always start off in the center of a polygon, but generally that's not advised. It's always better to start on an edge or a vert because that will give you a better control of your topology. I'm going to start at this vertice and make a left click to start the tool and then move to an edge and continue moving down these edges. I'll come to the end by clicking on this vert and make my way back up. So essentially I'm just splitting this geometry up in a manual way. Once I reach the end and I want to close the tool, I'll hit escape on the keyboard. At any point, I can now go across and maybe redirect 
across this way. If I haven't selected the edge when I want to close this, let's say for example I click outside when the edge is unselected and then escape that edge will not be that polygon will not be split it needs to be terminated on the edge itself when it goes yellow in color now i can escape to drop the tool and the split is created at any time using this tool i can right mouse click and edit the point like so which is really handy just to massage the points to where you need them to be exactly. The collapse tool under the tweak settings basically works on edges and if I click on an edge it will collapse the two vertices either side of the edge into a single vertice. This is a good way to reduce detail inside your model and is a standard tool in most 3D packages. The split rings tool, this allows us to split a row of polygons and preview where we would like that split to take place on our mesh. It's always better to follow an existing edge when deciding whether it's going to be a horizontal or a vertical split that you want. So by following an edge you can determine if your split is going to go vertically or horizontally. If you hold down spacebar you're presented with a value. This gives you the option as a percentage as to where you want to place your split. So if you wanted it directly through the center of this row, you simply type in 0 0.5 and hit OK. Then that split will take place in the center. So again, if I place my cursor to the left here, hit space, you can see that it's currently set at 0 0.87, roughly 90% of the way. So if I change this to 0 0.25, then the split will take place on the opposite side. 0%, 100% of that polygon gets split. So that's a good way for you to be more accurate. Also when using this tool, if my flow of polygons is terminated, in this case by this triangle, I cannot extend that split beyond that triangle. It will simply make a quad. I can come in with the right mouse button still and change these around. The split rings tool uses edges as selections so you can't take a single vertice to change when editing with the right mouse button. So having made that small adjustment, if I now use my split rings command, you can see that I can now go across and change direction with that split command until it reaches a triangle again. So to divert that flow completely to the end of the mesh, I will drop that tool, use my add and split, click on this point to split this polygon, hit escape and delete the edge. Now this will give me a flow which goes straight through and splits those polygons like so, redirecting the topology flow. The Show Open Edge tool allows us to see problems in our mesh. For example, we have this shape here and clearly we can see a split in our mesh. We have a number of open edges. All these edges on the outside of this shape are open and all the 
internal edges are considered open, which is what we'd expect for this shape. However, these edges are also considered open and it therefore identifies a problem in our mesh as we probably didn't intend this. And these two vertices need to be welded in order to remove that internal open edge. By clicking the open edge tool, we can see clearly where the problem lies. Now on this mesh, it's very simple. However, if your mesh is more complex, it's sometimes difficult to find these problems. So this is where the show open edge comes into play. What I'll do now is I'll use the move tool. I'll zoom in and with my edges selected, I'll drag over the other vertice. In 3D code, this action welds these two vertices together. I'll do the same for the other open edge and then I'll test to see if it was successful. And now you can see the only open edges remaining are those on the outside and inside. And I was able to correct the tear in the mesh using show open edge tool. The slide edges tool enables us to slide any individual edge. There is an additional option in this menu where we can click slide edge loops, which will take the whole loop and slide that uniformly. Again, you can also use the slide edges on an open edge such as this one and slide those edges in and out. The slide vertex tool works in a similar way to the slide edge tool, but on a vertex basis. If I hover over this vertex, you can see it appears with a small blue ring around it. By left clicking and dragging, I can now slide this vertex along the edge, grabbing any vertex like so. I can also grab an open edge vertex, such as this one, to change the shape of the silhouette of my model, like so. Similarly, with the internal, I can move this vertex further over to completely change the dynamic of that shape. Let's continue to look at some other tools inside the modeling workspace. What we can do now is start to bridge between new tools and the tools that we've already been looking at so far in this series. So let's begin by hitting the Y axis and look down and make sure that we are looking in an orthographic view by clicking this small icon here. The next tool we'll look at is the Curves Stroke tool. You'll notice this comes with extra tools associated with it but we're going to focus purely on the curves and strokes. The Curve Stroke tool is a very powerful tool set within 3D Coat, and it will require a number of tutorials to cover all aspects of it. I'm only going to cover the basics here. So we have, as you notice, when I clicked on the Curves Strokes tool, an area across the top of the interface with a large set of tools associated with it. If I hit Q on my keyboard, you'll see I have the same tools in a neat little toolbox that appears next to my cursor whenever I press the Q key. If I press E on the keyboard, then you'll notice as well that I only have Curves tool selected because it's the only one available to me. Additionally, you'll notice over on the right side, the Curves Tree Panel. If you don't see this, go over to Windows, Panels, and choose Curves Tree. The Curves Tree is very important because this will let us keep track of the curves we're generating, and it's a lot of functionality built into this panel. Okay, let's get started, and we'll look at the first four tools here associated with the curves. So the first one is the linear curves tool. So I'll just start by hitting the left mouse button and making my first point. And then I'm going to click and 
create some new points as I go along. To drop the tool, I'll hit Escape. So a number of things have happened here. First of all, you'll notice in the Curves tree that a new curve has been generated. I can toggle the visibility of this curve by hitting this small eye icon. I can rename this curve and I'll call this one Linear. The Linear curve has these anchor points where I clicked the left mouse button and these can be edited at any time. So here I'll use this editing tool here to move the anchor points like so. I can use any of these tools by just hitting the Q key and edit like so. The next tool is the spline tool. Now when I create a new curve, because I dropped the tool previously on the linear curve, any new points I place down will be generating a new curve. So let's do that. You'll notice that the spline curve acts differently. Escape to drop the tool. And you can see here that we're generating a much smoother curve. Again, Q on the keyboard, I'll use the editing function and then I can change these curves around. If I want to move the whole curve, I can click this tool, click on, and then I can move the whole curve in my workspace. And likewise, the previous curve. You'll notice that the layers are updating every time I click with this selection tool. The next curve we'll use is the Bezier curve. So here I'll start again and start to make some points and click on this curve. Again, escape to drop the tool. Q on the keyboard and edit these points. And the final curve is the freeform curve. This one, I will just left click the mouse and hold the mouse down and drag to create a new freeform curve. You'll notice how it was plotting to keep track of my move, mouse movements and then it simplified the curve afterwards. Let's draw another one. Left click and drag the mouse and release to simplify the curve. Q on the keyboard and now I can move those points around. By simplifying the curve, it means it's a lot easier for me to edit this curve. Now you can see that we have our curve selected in the curves tree. I can shift click and select all the curves, Q on the keyboard, use the move tool and move all my curves around in one go. I can click on one of the curves, let's select the last one that I created and delete that curve. Let's select the top of the curves tree here where it says curves strokes and I will delete. That will delete all the sub curves within that stack. I'm going to use the freeform curve again now and drag out a few more points and then I'm going to create some more points going horizontally across. All I need to do now to create a mesh from these curves is hit the update button. And 3D Code will generate some polygons where it considers these overlaps here as complete quad polys. At any time I can come in and create some more geometry just by dragging anywhere I want to and then hit update. What I'll do now, just to make it a little bit clearer, is hide the curves and you can see the polys that have been generated. Now normally when we're using the tools we can right mouse button and edit the vertices as we did previously. However with the curve strokes tool we're not allowed to do that because the curve stroke tool only allows us to edit curves and those anchor points that we were generating here. In order to start moving the vertices around we'll need to select a different tool. So we've already used, for example, the points to polys tool before, so we'll reuse that one. And now I can right mouse and edit these points. 
So that's an alternative way for us to generate these polygons using curves instead. Let's bring the curves back to visibility and we can move these curves around. Let's choose the curve stroke tool again and start to move these around however we want to and create different types of topology. Now this is a very basic setup here. But if it was something that I needed to save, maybe I needed a repeat of this topology later on in a project, then I could save these curves used to generate these polygons by hitting the small icon here to save and then reload them at a later date. We've looked at some curves. Let's have a look at some shapes now. Now I'm going to just choose a few of these shapes, notably the rectangle shape here and you'll notice when I clicked on the rectangle shape I got this tools option dialog box here and if I just click the left mouse button and drag you'll see I can create a rectangle. There's a small widget on the side of the rectangle here that I can use to change the shape of that rectangle or I can use these options in here. Additionally, I can add a radii to these shapes. Let's reset and put everything back to how it was. And if I click update now, you'll notice it gives me a polygon inside that area. I'll hide the curve here and you can see there's my shape. So going back to my points to polys tool here, I can now come in and change the shape even further Let's clear this away. So I'm going to hit delete in the curves tree and I'm also going to clear the polygroup layer contents. Let's go back to the curves tool. This time let's use this ngon tool. Now you can see I can change param parameters here. So let's draw out my first ngon here. And you can see the curves tree has been updated with an ngon layer. And here I can change the number of sides my ngon has. I can change the height and width of that ngon. Additionally, at the top here, you can see this icon, which is the move icon. This gives me a widget to manipulate this object with. So I can now use the widget to transform this ngon as well. And similarly, I can squash and stretch however I want to. Again, if I press update, it will place an ngon polygon inside that area. I'll hide the curves tree information, go back over to my points to polys tool here, and now I can change the shape of this ngon. Okay, let's remove these and clear the layer. And what I'll do now is I will create a, a basic linear curve and create another shape like so. Hit escape. And this time what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard and choose the anchor point editor there and select one of the points. And I will now use this tool here, which is like a beveling tool. So I'll click this tool and you'll notice with the setting I placed in previously of 58.5, it rounded out that sharp edge for me. Let's do the same on this point. Let's change this value in here to maybe 70. And click OK. And now the next time I click that tool, it will adopt the value of 70. So it's a good way of putting radii onto these curves. And this way I can get a very precise curve. So with the curve selected, at any time I can click the widget to move this, rotate it around and position it how I need and even scale it in any axis. So as you can see, the curves tool is very powerful and gives a lot of functionality 
to the way that we can model inside of 3D Coat. In the next video, we will continue to look at other tools available in the modeling workspace. See you next time.